Okay. Um, I'm going to give, I'm going to try to keep this once again, like really short, um, because I don't have time again, but good news. I lost, um, I lost, I'm closer to my goal weight than ever. I was, um, I started out at 183 pounds when I like started kind of like this personal health journey about a year ago. It's been like almost a year. I was started off at, I thought 183 and it turns out it was 187. And now I'm just like, I'm down to 153 and I'm five, five, seven. So as long as I'm in like the one, the one fifties, um, it's, it's manageable. I feel like pretty, um, pretty, a little, a little confident and okay with my, with my body. But that's, it, this is like the first time, um, that I've lost weight intentionally in my adult life in a healthy way, like ever. I'm 38 and I'd never um, lost weight like in my adult adult life in a, in a healthy way intentionally. So that's great. Look at my ceiling. It's blue. My, um, my walls are yellow and my ceiling is like this beautiful shade of navy. And health goals, weight loss, blue, a blue bathroom. I have two cactus plants that have been alive for um, years now. I have a dog that is fixed and microchips. Um, I found a Gigi Allen record at um, this really awesome local record store that we've had um, here called Cheap Thrills. I got a Gigi Allen record and I framed it. So like every time um, I use a bathroom, I look at like this Gigi Allen record, which is really awesome. And there's just so many like little, little things like that, that just really I've noticed make life worth living. I got my tongue pierced like this was years ago now, like maybe two years I've had my, my tongue pierced. But um, for a long time, I wanted a tongue ring like when it was kind of like a new thing to do, like God, when I was like 12 or 13. And then by the time I turned 18, I was like, oh, I just didn't do it. And then, um, like three and a half years later, I was like a full fledged drug addict for 13 years. So obviously I didn't have the disposable income for like <laughs> anything, let alone, um, my, a tongue piercing. And I have, um, like some, some earrings too in my ears, but just like little things like that are, just amazing like it feels so good just to do like small things and I just never I never thought I would be like at a place where I could keep houseplants alive and it doesn't matter that it's like cactuses um they're like the really cute cactus plants that are like have like little pink blooms and stuff but I, I couldn't keep anything alive I couldn't keep myself alive let alone like you know, a house plant for an extended period of time. I couldn't keep a house. So, I mean, where the hell am I going to keep house plants? You know, I couldn't keep anything. And, you know, I never, I never uploaded it, but I made a video. It was, it was interrupted. So I didn't, that's why I didn't upload it. Um, I made a video on the 19th of July. So it was just like two and a half weeks ago and two and a half, three weeks ago. And, on the um, four year anniversary of when I was almost killed. And that was just like, honestly, this is so weird to say, but that was like probably one of the best things so far that's ever happened to me. Um, which that is really, really weird. Like even a, a, a friend was like, oh my God, you know, I'm so sorry that happened recently in a conversation. Um, and I didn't even know what he was, what he was talking about for a second. I was like, so sorry, what happened? He was like, you know, being almost killed. And I was like, oh yeah. And I guess I just don't feel like it was a bad, a, a bad thing, you know, even though, you know, it was a violent thing and it was a horrific thing and it almost cost me my life. And I'll have like these scars forever. Um, besides like the, the trauma, you know, and I'm not speaking about the person who almost killed me because they're dead, you know, and that's a whole, um, other, other thing, but I'm just speaking like 
from from me you know that that event like changed me on um like it feels like a cellular level you know and i just feel so fortunate that i lived through something that finally um was big enough and catastrophic enough and i guess it was as violent and as bloody and as traumatic as it had to be um obviously because if, i mean if it if it if it didn't have to be that bad it wouldn't have been that bad you know but nothing i think less would have um woken me up and because nothing did and that's why um you know making these videos because this is i'm still like not good at it i don't know how to do any of like the cool editing or anything like that and i'm still just like such an introvert like i'm so uncomfortable making these this is like not my um forte naturally but i'm trying to like push myself just in the hopes well I, i'm trying to push myself for, for selfish reasons just for like personal growth too because it feels like i i should work on like speaking and and kind of like speaking my truth or whatever um but also you know if uh, like i said in the first video if there's like just one at least one person that you know will maybe get something from my story that's in a similar position i would really that would just be awesome because i could have easily died and you know just last week this um girl that i went to school with died and you know people were just like dropping dead every single day um from addiction but not but it's not just really addiction addiction is just like a symptom of like this bigger problem um i think within pretty much everybody's life but just within society and it's just like this um disease of like despair and chaos and like i said just an inability to process pain and you know this girl i went to um we were in girl scouts together when we were little and you know her family you know she was from a you know a quote unquote good family too and and she was just a sweet person and she like um i remember she was like really christian um but you know she died alone and she was she was killed she was murdered in um in a park like as a you know a homeless lost woman and the newspaper write-up um that i read it, i read it online it was so sad because it just said a homeless woman um you know and it's just like my god i don't know it's just something about it. just like it's really sad because it's like these people aren't just like you know it's not just like a homeless woman and she wasn't just you know a homeless woman and, and nobody is like everybody that you see like on the side of the road or, or that has nowhere to go or that's just like fucking lost you know they are like you know a person and they um you know had dreams and goals or you know even worse maybe they didn't have dreams or or goals at least i never had goals when i was homeless um i never had goals until i survived um being almost killed i ne and i that's like a big epiphany i never had a goal never <laughs> um you know i had things like loosely like big picture things i wanted to do like oh um you know i want to be a, a, like a, one of them was like i'm gonna live in seattle and i want to do this and i want to live in like the pacific northwest and you know i had this like image best case scenario growing up of like the, the type of person i wanted to be but it's like i knew something wasn't clicking like uh, I, I didn't know how to um, take these like tangible steps to make my dreams um, a reality and I've realized recently that I, I never had had goals like I had these these dreams of like having um, like a cute little apartment with like living house plants but I, I I didn't know how to take the next step of making these dreams a um, into goals and then into ultimately a reality and I think that's because a uh, lack of uh, just a lack of sense of self and a lack of self-love and an inability to process um the uh, the pain of life you know 
because it's like, how can you, what's the point of living? No wonder, like, I felt so empty. Um, I mean, I was, I was empty, but no wonder, you know, if you don't have like goals, if you don't have something you're working towards, then why are you alive? You know, and that's why I was like, what was the meaning of this? Like, no wonder I didn't have an answer. Um, you know, I, I, I had no goals and I didn't have any confidence. Or I didn't have any a sense of self. I didn't have any self-love. I didn't have any self-esteem. I was just like, you know, lost and I was drifting, like drifting along. And I just, I, I felt so empty and hopeless that I felt like I was ready for, for death, but like I wasn't ready to die, you know? And when I woke up in the hospital after being, you know, almost killed, I, I, I didn't think about it like, oh, let me follow the law of attraction. I didn't think about it from the sense of, oh, I have to get some, um, you know, self-confidence. It still took me a, a while to like get to that point, um, where I could actually kind of, um, describe like the processes I was going through. I just knew like I had to try to do something different because, um, you know, I wasn't happy and that's, that's like a weird thing because needle dope and like hard drugs and addiction, like it's a, it's a synthetic happiness, but you know, it, it is, um, will, will make you like happy in the moment, but like, you know, I don't, I didn't want to like wear happiness for like the extension of my high. I wanted to like be okay with existing and that's what I could not do. I didn't know how to be okay. So like I said in a previous video, it's like I can never be, um, until I got into hard, like hard drugs when I was like 20, uh, 21, it's like, I, I tried to be like this perfect person. I was like a perfectionist with low self-esteem and like, a lack of sense of self so it was like you know I was a wreck but I tried to be like a you know a good student and a good daughter and like a great you know girlfriend and just I try to be like everything to everyone because I was just like desperate for approval and validation and like a place to belong and I was just desperate for someone um, someone something anything to like show me how to live, you know, um, show me how to be okay. And like I said in a previous video, I could never be like good enough to be good. And then when I started doing drugs, it's like, oh, okay. You know, every time I got high, it was like a bandaid. It's like, oh, a bandaid that helps a bandaid that helps. It's like, I was treating these symptoms and you know, when you're treating the symptoms, when it's working, it feels like a cure. It's like, hell, I mean, I'll, if I treat my, my symptoms 24 seven for the rest of my life, I mean, I'm cured, right? But not really because you can't just be high all the time. And even if you could, you still wouldn't be happy. You know, you still wouldn't. Even people that are like multimillionaires and can just get high as much as they want. They're not happy, you know? And that's the thing. It's like, you, I can never be good enough to be good. I can never be bad enough to be happy. And that's every single addict, you know? Um, so when I decided to try to like live, um, I knew like uh, I had to get the, the drugs under control, but that was just like the, the very like surface level was, um, was the actual like drugs and the addiction itself. So the great thing about, you know, being an addict today is that there, you know, there is Suboxone, there is like a lot of, um, you know, medications that assist in sobriety and, and people, you know, I'll, I'm going to do a video on that because there's a lot of, um, different opinions on like medicated assisted sobriety. And I'm, you know, the bottom line opinion, the only opinion that matters is like, does it work for you? You know, if, if you, if you take a medication and you take it as it's prescribed and it is something you can take every day to stop you from doing like hard drugs, then, then it works, you know, that's great. And so, you know, I started taking Suboxone actually like following, you know, the doctor's um, prescription and not like abusing uh, my prescription. 
And so that took care of like the drug aspect, like the actual substances. But the, the real work was like step two was getting to um, the problem that led me to use in the first place. And I didn't really, um, like I said, know how to articulate that it was an inability to, to process pain and an inability to just like be able to live. But, oh God, my dog's in here. But, um, you know, I just started to like do what I wanted to do. And that's when, um, I started to like journal because it was like, you know, this one night I was like, you know what, I'm going to try to like write just because I always, I had these, this like past life of like homelessness and just addiction. And by the time I got to the place where I had, it was like taking Suboxone and had like this shitty minimum wage job. Um, I felt like I had this like double life of, you know, this, my past, like recent past of addiction and despair and like just being a full, full fledged junkie. And like this past and my, this past trauma was like eating me alive. And when I started to like write, write it out, it was like a, an emotional purging. And that first night that I stayed up and began to journal, that was like, a life-changing um, night as well and it was like wow that was like I knew instantly I was like wow this is um, at, at the very least it's a hobby and a passion and that was something else that I had never had never had before I never had a healthy um, a healthy passion and you know you can't live authentically and you can't live from the heart if you don't um, give yourself that chance if you don't love yourself and just do what the fuck you want to do. But if it's not actually nourishing your soul, it's not what you want to do. It's what, you know, you think you want to do, but that's, but it ain't it. And you know, if it's, I didn't know how to live authentically. So I looked th for like, you know, society to tell me what to do or like my family or like these societal expectations or like my perceived societal expectations you know and for some people just doing um you know the obvious thing the right thing just the socially acceptable thing that's just not not gonna work for you and if it's not you can feel it and i honestly i feel i've gotten to a place where i just feel so um lucky that um there was something inside of me i guess like tenacity or um you know whatever like maybe it's just like rebellion i i don't know but whatever combination inside of me prevented me from just like pulling the trigger on this life of inauthenticity. You know, I could have easily like, um, just kept smoking weed and stuck with the major and gotten a job because that's what I was expected to do. And that's what like, you know, would have been the, you know, the obvious path. But for whatever reason, I just couldn't do that. And at the end of the day, like I'm so, grateful that, um, I didn't just like die in this like quiet, um, you know, <laughs> depth of despair. Um, so anyway, I don't know, this was like all over the place, but, but I think I want to wrap it up. See y'all later.